Hello, and welcome to our educational video series. In order to safely use the electrosurgical unit with maximum benefit, it is important to understand the principle of electricity and the functionality of the unit that is being used. In this video, we will briefly review some terminology used during electrosurgery, then exclusively describe the functionality of the ERBI unit and its use in interventional pulmonology. First, let's start by reviewing some key terms that we are going to use during this presentation. Think of the electrical current as an organized flow of electric charges through a conductor and the voltage being the electrical pressure or the driving force. Voltage and current are controlled by the unit. The resistance of the tissue is dependent on the water content of the tissue. Electrosurgery is the use of high frequency electrical current on biological tissue creating heat and a series of thermodestructive effects. Electrocautery differs from electrosurgery in that an electrical current heats a metallic probe that is then applied to tissue. In cutting, the tissue is rapidly heated above 100 degrees Celsius using high voltage, causing vaporization and cellular rupture. In coagulation, the tissue is heated more gently, between 60 to 100 degrees Celsius, causing devitalization and shrinkage of tissue. The electrosurgery unit requires the presence of a circuit for current to flow. The circuit, when using a monopolar instrument, is composed of the generator which is the source of the electron flow and voltage the instrument, which acts as the active electrode, the patient, and the patient return electrode. The current flows between the electrodes through the patient's body and generates the required heat for the electrosurgical effect. With the old units, once the current enters patient's body, it passes then into the ground rather than back to the unit. The ground was an inherent part of the circuit, and the system was called ground reference system. With the advent of the isolated generator technology in the 1970s, the circuit is now completed by the generator, and not by the ground. The unit recognizes the patient's return electrode as the preferred pathway back to the generator. The terms monopolar or bipolar, come to play when talking about instrumentation, it is based on the way the instrument is designed. The monopolar instrument, comprises one electrode, and the patient's body is included in the circuit as we just saw in the previous image. The so-called grounding pad, is used to close the pathway of the current, or to complete the cycle. In bipolar instrumentation, the current is restricted to the immediate vicinity of the instrument that is composed of two electrodes. There is no electrical current that flows through the patient's body. The only part of the patient that is exposed to the current, is the area that is being treated. So there is no need for a dispersion pad. Even with the new ESU, we continue to hear the expression grounding the patient. Actually, we have moved from the ground reference to isolated units. In endoscopy, the active electrode is able to work either in a contact or a non-contact manner. In contact mode, the current is immediately dispersed into the tissue, whereas in non-contact mode, an arc is created between the electrode and the tissue surface, causing thermal effect. The modes vary between electrosurgical units, and the terminology is specific to the manufacturer. The ERBI unit offers several options between two currents, cut and coagulation. They differ primarily in the rate and magnitude with which they induce a temperature increase within the target tissue. In general, coagulation currents induce a slower increase in temperature within the cells, between 70 and 100 degrees Celsius, and causes them to dehydrate and shrink without bursting. Cut current, on the other hand, causes more rapid heat increases to temperature above 100 degrees Celsius, causing the cellular water to boil, and the cell to rupture, leading to cleavage of the tissue that lies along the active electrode. The degree of the thermal effects depends on several factors, the application duration, the power setting, the probe distance and other factors like the type of tissue. So let's review the programs used in the airways, which are highlighted here. The endocut, and the argon plasma coagulation. Those are the two basic currents, and they're used as based on what we are trying to achieve, cut, coagulate or both. The default settings, are based on evidence-based practices, However, the physician is responsible for choosing the appropriate equipment, instrumentation and setting, to effectively treat each patient. The lowest possible setting, should be used to achieve the desired end effect. It is worth mentioning that, endocut I, is tailored specifically for sphincterotomies, and various other dissection knife electrodes, while endocut Q, is tailored for snares resection. This is a depiction of the ERBI unit receptacles, with the different modules, bipolar, monopolar, neutral or grounding pad port, and APC receptacle. The ERBI APC probe, have been designed with instruments recognition. The unit, will automatically display default starting setting, which can subsequently be adjusted if deemed necessary by the physician. 
The argon gas, flows down A through the scope catheter, which contains an active electrode that is connected to the ESU, and delivers a monopolar electrical current, converting the inert argon to ionized argon gas, which is called argon plasma. The ionized electrically conductive argon gas, can cause tissue coagulation via three distinctive modes, with different coagulation properties. In force APC, there is continuous application of energy, and consistent firing. The intensity can be adjusted using the power setting. In a more precise APC application, the intensity can be adjusted using different setting effects. And in pulsed APC, there is intermittent application of energy, using two different effects. Effect 1, which has short individual pulses, suitable in treating small and superficial area. Effect 2, has higher frequency of pulses, and used in treating larger bleeding area, it is also used in tumor debulking, with a high power setting and adjustable gas flow. Complications are more often related to faulty connections, and operator error rather than the malfunction of the unit itself. Most of the complications described here, can be avoided by, working under visual control. Avoiding direct tissue contact with the APC probe. Using as low an argon flow as possible. Do not apply gas too long over the same anatomic location. And ensure the supplemental oxygen level is below 40%. Let's now review the cutting mode. Endocut, is a cutting mode, with a cut cycle, followed by coagulation effect at set intervals. With each spike, you heat up the tissue, then the tissue cools down, and the cells dehydrate resulting into coagulation. Endocut Q mode, refers to the type of setting design for snare resection. Monopolar snares are currently the standard of practice. The cut effect, reflects the intensity of hemostasis added to the cut, or the amount of coagulation that happens in between the cuts. During the cut's intervals, there is an increase by 160 milliseconds with each increase in interval. The longer the interval, the longer the coagulation effect. Longer interval cuts are choose when there is a concern of bleed to allow longer coagulation time. For a quick start, using the endo cut cue, always position the machine where you can see it. Turn on the unit. Select the appropriate program. Press the focus button of the monopolar receptacle. Check the program screen to confirm or change setting. Plug in the active cord and attach the device. Place the pad on the patient, and plug the return electrode into the neutral electrode receptacle. Position well the foot switch. Before activating the ESU, the settings should be rechecked again, and verbally confirmed between the endoscopist and the assistant. Again, it is recommended to always start by using the lowest possible setting, that will achieve the desired surgical effect. There is no ideal setting, the physician can vary the duration of cutting bursts, the length of time between cuts, and the effect, which is the intensity of the coagulation, based on what is being treated, and the desired effect. For a quick start, using the argon plasma coagulation. Again, position the machine where you can see it. Turn on the unit. Select the appropriate APC program. Press the focus button, beside the APC receptacle. Check the program screen, to confirm or change settings. Connect the argon plasma probe to the unit. Place an ignition tester into the neutral electrode receptacle. Press the rinse button twice, to purge the probe with argon gas. Position well the foot switch. During testing, hold the tip of the probe close to, but not touching the center of the ignition tester. Briefly press the blue pedal. A bright blue beam should be seen as the argon gas ignites. The unit possess an electronic identifier, which means the unit automatically detects the device after the connection, and default setting is executed automatically. In APC, the distal tip design of the probe, determines the direction of argon gas flow, which can be axial, side fire or circumferential. Place the pad on the patient, and plug the return electrode into the neutral electrode receptacle. Before activating the ESU, the settings should be rechecked again, and verbally confirmed between the physician and the assistant. There is no ideal setting to be used during pulsed APC. It is always recommended to start by using the lowest possible setting, that will achieve the desired surgical effect. It is worth mentioning that, the settings are usually higher when used for ablation. The APC probe, must always remain in the clinician's field of vision, and activated only when the tissue being treated is within field of view. The Irby unit, also offers the possibility to customize and name programs based on physician's preference, and area that is being treated. During use, the screen may display different messages. A green dialog box, conveys helpful information, for example the probe is being purged. A red dialog box, displays critical information that impacts the completion of a function. In summary, safety doesn't depend on the equipment only, 
It also depends on medical personnel training and correct operation of the equipment. Lack of knowledge of the active setting of the unit can cause damage and poor outcome. Training on the fundamental use and safety of devices is important. It helps effectively communicate and ensure safe operation. This conclude our video. Thank you very much for your attention. For any comment or suggestion, please don't hesitate to leave us a message below. Goodbye.